Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about a topic that's confusing to many, the management VLAN. <clears throat> so let's begin by this. I'm over here at this PC, and I have connectivity to distribution one switch right here. It has been configured with two switch virtual interfaces and a physical interface. Okay, so I'm going to do IP config. You can see I've been doing some things here. Okay, it's kind of fresh there. Okay, so there's my default gateway. Okay, because I can reach my default gateway, uh, I let's make sure, ping 10, 10, 0 0.1. This one right here. Okay, make sure, whoops. Ping 10, 10, 0 0.1. There we go. Okay, well, these other addresses are actually on that switch to virtual one physically configured on gig 1024. I should be able to ping all those addresses. 10, 20, 0 0.1, and the physical interface. Ping 10, 111, 1.1. Now, distribution one and all these switches have been configured for Telnet. Okay, we'll change that to SSH in a later lab. But for now, let's test that we can should be able to tell that into that distribution switch using any of those addresses. Okay, Cisco, yep. Let's do 20.1. Yep. And let's do, uh, let's see, telnet. The physical interface, 10.111.1.1. Yep. Okay, we're good to go. All right. But, you know, what are what if we want to be able to tell that into all of our other switches and other devices? So first of all, I'm going to talk about this in a later lab. But the reason why these addresses are all reachable is... Uh, that this device here can reach it via this uh, IP address because this is a trunk and this port is a trunk link that carries VLAN 10. All right, makes sense. Okay, we'll talk about routing later and that's gonna be another video. Um, so what about adding, act so you notice these 10, 180 addresses. Ignore those right now. I'm going to talk about those in just a moment. I can create a switch virtual interface on any of these switches that, uh, that, have, that belong to a VLAN, an associated IP network, as long as that trunk link carries that VLAN. Okay, So I could do VLAN 10, VLAN 20, and even any of the other VLANs that this trunk carries. But kind of the, the, the best practice is to create a management VLAN. And what I've done here is that we've already done this, but or I've already set it up. Management VLAN is VLAN 180. Okay. And although it shows a slash 16, I'm going to have two different slash 24 management VLANs, 10.181.0 and 10.182.0. So let me move this out of the way. And on the distribution switch here, you can see, and I'm gonna show you that right now, I've pre-configured switch virtual interface, VLAN 180. Here's its IP address, 10.181.1. Now this IP address also will have a special purpose for these switches here. It will be their default gateway. So when we talk about these switches and their default gateway, when we are accessing the switch, we are accessing as if it was now a server, a computer, okay? As, as if two end devices were communicating with each other. When an end device, say this one here, telnets or SSHs into any switch, it's telnetting into it as if it's a telnet server or a, uh, SSH server as if it's another end device with that I telling it into the with the IP address of that device. All right, okay, so uh, let's take a look at some of these other access switches here. You can see that I pre-configured them 
all VLAN 180. Now look, this is the, the slash 24 network. These are all slash 24s, including distribution one. They all belong to 10181. The distribution switch was dot one. This one here is dot 10. This switch has been configured with its default gateway. So whenever anybody has telneted into the switch or SSH into it, now it's acting as a computer on this address. If the, it needs to return packets back to who's ever accessing this device, uh, it needs a default gateway of its own if that device is on another network, just like two computers communicating with each other on separate networks, they both need default gateways to, to kind of their local post office. Okay, so we can see that throughout here. Interface VLAN 180, IP address, subnet mass. Okay, the 20 host address on this network, same default gateway, distribution one. Show you this as one more over here. Interface VLAN 180, same network, slash 24, but it's the 30 on that network. Okay, slash 24, same default gateway. Over here, distribution two will be serving a similar purpose as distribution one on the other one. Okay, so let me scroll up, show you that. There we are right there. VLAN 180, 10.182.1. Okay, so that's, it's switch virtual interface. We're using the same VLAN, although it's on a separate network. That's fine because we have a separate, reason we're creating two separate 10.181.0 slash 24 networks and 10.182.0 slash 24 networks. We have a third network in between. Yeah. So we need to make, make these two separate networks. Okay or we can have some routing problems. On the rest of these, okay, you can see that, let me move that over here. All same in VLAN 180, but on this subnet 10.182.0 slash 24 network. And here's their default gateway distribution too. I'll show you one more. I don't need to belabor, let's go way down here. Okay. VLAN 180, 10.182.40, okay, 10.182.0 network, slash 24, ah, there we go. And the default gateway, 10.182.1. Okay, so what does this all mean? What this means is that this device here, Okay, all right. Uh, should be able to now reach just about all these other devices. Well, we've got IP addresses here. Let's look at the routing tables on these on these distribution switch, switches. Show IP route. So uh, this distribution switch here says, yes, I know about my directly connected networks, all my Switch virtual interfaces. Okay, I even know about my directly connected network to a physical, let me make that a little smaller here so we can see it, to this physical net, this my physical port that's on this network here, 10.11.1.0. But notice one thing it doesn't know. It doesn't know about the 10.182. networks over here, or the 10 the network 10182.net subnet over here. Just like this distribution switch here, let me make that a little smaller. I do show IP route. Okay. It, it knows about its directly connected networks. Okay. And even its 180 network, but it doesn't know about the 180 network here. Now I need to point out, it does know about these, the 10, 10, 10, 10, 0, 0, and 10, 20, 0, 0, slash 16 networks, because we previously, in the previous lab, configured static routes to those. Just like distribution one switch here, let me move that over here, 
knows about the 10, this slightly over here, 10.30.00 and 10.40.00 slash 16 networks because we previously configured static routes for those via distribution two. But neither distribution switch knows about the other ones, uh, management VLAN networks, 10.180.2.0 and distribution two doesn't know about 10.180.1.0. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is config T, okay, IP route 10 dot 182.0. Now this is a slash 24. And our next hop address to get to these or any devices here wanting to get to these switches here. But oh, don't forget the zero. I forgot the zero. Next hop address will be 10.1111.2. Distribution one will forward those packets to distribution two, and then it's up to distribution two to get it there, and which is no problem because it's directly connected to that uh, IP network slash VLAN. Okay, so that shouldn't be a problem. Great. Matter of fact, let's do show IP route. We can even see it in our routing table. So we have a new static route right here. Okay, those packets are gonna be sent to router distribution layer three switch distribution two router, just like these two uh, networks over here, 10.30.00 and 10.40.00. Let's go over distribution two. Let's do something similar, config T, IP route. 10.181.0255255255.0. Because that's what we have over here. All 10.181.0 slash 24 devices. Management VLAN. And let's see, distribution two will send that to 10.111.1.1. There we go. Now, I should mention that these static routes are important for any of these devices wanting to access Telnet SSH into these switches, including distribution two. Just as if the static route get on distribution two getting to 10.181.1.0 is important for any of these devices to be able to Telnet into any of these switches here, okay? All right, let's do a little testing here. Okay, so we know, we, we could see that this device was able to, well, let's make sure I can tell that into switches. It's a little small here, there we go. Can it telnet into switches in its own 10.181.0 on this side of distribution one? Distribution one is directly connected to 10.181.0. So when we, well, let's ping it first. Ping 10.180, let's do 1.10. Let's just do this switch here. Now you have to remember these packets are actually being routed to its default gateway 10.10.0.1 and then, then being sent out the 10.180.1.1 uh, interface tagged VLAN 80. So we'll do routing later, but that's how it's getting here. Think of this as a, a computer on a separate network, which it is. That's what we're doing here. So let's access it. Telnet. 10.181.10. Cisco. We're in. Okay. So it's just as think of when, when we are accessing a switch, SVI, switch virtual interface, an IP address on another switch, telnetting into it, pinging it. It's just as if it is another computer on a separate network, separate VLAN. Okay. It just happens to be the switch. 
Okay, so how about one of these over here? Can we ping 10 dot, let's do uh, 180, let's do the distribution switch here, 2.1, 10, 180, 2.1. We can ping it, that's a good sign. Okay, can I tell net to it? Back up there, tell net. Yep, Cisco, we're in. How about one of these other ones? Let's try way over here, 10.182.40. Can I ping it? No, wait there. All right, ARP. Okay, so if I ping it again, it should be no delay, at least no timeouts. Um, so re remember, the reason why this device can access these IP addresses of these switches is because we configured a new static route for 10.182.0 network. So this router slash layer three switch forwards those packets here. And it's as if it's just another one of its directly connected networks, which it is on distribution two. We'll cover routing later, okay? I think that's a great discussion to understand how all of this, you know, how this all gets routed and where the tagging happens and all that kind of good stuff, okay? So yes, no problem. And, uh, oh, we pinged it. Let's make sure we can tell that into it, right? That's what we want to do. Ten, tell that 10 dot 180 2 dot 40. Cisco, look at that. We're in access 2 dash 4 right here. Level 2, column 4. Okay. So this management VLAN makes it really nice for several reasons. Uh, it isolates the management VLAN from other VLANs if there's an issue with another VLAN. Hopefully we can still access the, the devices, the switches in this case that we need access to. We need to tell that or SSH to them. Um, also, it makes it easy to remember what our IP addresses are of our different devices so we can tell that SSH into them. We can also make it a little easier for things like when we do access control lists, when we want, want to uh, control who has access and from where to be able to telnet SSH into devices with this IP address or these IP addresses. So it just makes it much easier to manage. I know it looks a little strange and we'll talk more about routing. I think that's, that is gonna be a separate video, but we can see that uh, all these devices have their own IP address. And this is used for really remote access, just as if these were separate computers. Just when we are telnetting, pinging these IP addresses, it's as if they are individual computers on this separate network, this separate VLAN. I hope this video helped. Uh, we've got more cool stuff coming as we build this network. But one of the things I want to do is not just the configuration, but hopefully that you understand what has happened. And once again, the lab associated with this video is in the comments. Okay, you can be uh, get the uh, link to it there. All right. Thanks for listening.